Hello there, everybody. This is Mel Allen. Not even the mystery fan can tell the victors from the victims in these pennant plots. Shadow of a clock, Philadelphia hitmen riddle the East. But here's the catch. Houston sleuths track down the West. Murder in the Red Barn. Cincinnati holds up the Dodgers. Dial S for save. The jury is still out on Fireman of the Year. To catch a thief, most wanted base burglars get off scot-free. And call in the dogs, put out the fire, the hunt is over. The Royals rest their case. Major League Thrillers and Chillers coming up on This Week in Baseball. National League Countdown. The precious days dwindling fast in both divisional races. In Los Angeles, the Western Division Dodgers holding a tense one-game edge over Houston hosted Cincinnati. Five and a half out and desperate to stay alive. The Reds needed a big effort in their three-game series and got it from the whole ball club. The Big Red Machine scored 20 runs in the first two games, winning by scores of 10 to 7 and 10 to 2. Johnny Bench with the bases loaded in the second inning of the opener delivered big. Going, going it is gone. The 11th Grand Slam of Bench's career. California fans were getting a bird's eye view of the strange flight patterns that tight races can take late in the year. In the finale, Mario Soto was flying brilliantly in a solo effort, leading two to one, striking out 10. But with Dusty Baker batting in the ninth, pandemonium took command. The Dodgers scored the tying run. And reliever Tom Hume was called in to quell a bases loaded, no out situation. A deep hole to climb out of, but this fly wasn't deep enough to score the winning run. One away. Next batter, Daryl Thomas. A jittery Dave Concepcion still gets the force at home. Two away. One last try. Mickey Hatcher at bat. But Hume exhumes the Reds and then escapes another bases loaded jam before Ken Griffey got a chance to atone for his game tying error with a game winning hit. Cincinnati scored five times in the 11th to lead 7 to 2. And Hume, breathing easier now, retired the side again to give the Reds a three-game sweep, keeping their pennant chances alive as they now trail by three and a half, this time behind the first place Houston Astros. The Astros took their act on the road and struck gold in San Francisco, where fans got a taste of Texas, while the Astros got a taste of the strange winds of Candlestick Park. The Giants took the opener, but in the second contest, Jeff Leonard pinch hit with the game tied in the ninth and tipped the scales in favor of Houston. Given a 3-2 lead, Joe Sambito finished the job with his 17th save, and it was Houston's 32nd one-run victory and a tie for first. In the wrap-up game, starter Vern Rule, making a great recovery from early season back surgery, 
ruled out giant bids for a base hit inning after inning. The no-hit effort was also kept alive by Cesar Cedeno. But with two outs in the eighth inning, pinch hitter Jim Wolford was sent up to try to tarnish Rule's golden gem. The no-hitter was no more, and later even became a three-hitter. But Rule and the Astros still prevailed five to one. For Vern Rule, a 10-4 record after entering the year 30 and 38 lifetime. And for Houston, first place in the National League West. Over in the National League East, the Philadelphia Phillies also moved into first, building momentum on a sunny weekend at Chicago's Wrigley Field against the Cubs, who raised a few eyebrows by beating the Phillies in the opener. But the Cubs couldn't quite generate the power the next two games. Pete Rose took a friendly slap on the head and then slapped the ball around the park while the Cubs kicked in with some clumsy fielding giving Philadelphia a few too many extra bases. Everyone had to watch their heads. Manager Dallas Green watched with satisfaction as rookie Marty Bystrom raised his fledgling record to a perfect three and nothing, all during the September pressure cooker. And veteran Dick Ruthven raised his mark to 16 and 10. Both games were seven to three wins, powered by that old one-two punch. A healthy Greg Lezinski, stroke number 18. MVP candidate Mike Schmidt socked numbers 40 and 41, later adding 42 and 43 as Philadelphia yo-yoed half a game ahead and then half a game behind Montreal in the National League East. Now, time for this week's Volkswagen quiz. Brought to you by the 1980 Dasher. Volkswagen does it again. In Texas, they're shaking those pom-poms for leadoff man Mick the Quick Rivers, who's shaking a pretty mean stick. A 332 average and 205 hits. A club record for most hits in the season. Can you name the player who holds the major league record for most hits in the season? Stay tuned. Sundown in the American League West. The division fight ended in Kansas City as the bubbly poured early for the number one Kansas City Royals. On September 17th, Dennis Leonard shut out the defending champion California Angels in the first half of a twinite doubleheader, the earliest clinching in the Royals' brief history and the team's fourth division title in the last five years. With a lead fluctuating from 15 to 20 games, the Royals still have a chance to win by the largest margin in American League history, which is 19 and a half games, but that's not the only reason why they feel there'll be more champagne before the year is done. One reason is hitting. The team average is near 290, highest in the majors in 30 years, largely because of George Brett's bid for 400. Brett has reached base almost half the time and easily leads the majors in slugging. A top MVP candidate, because in the almost 50 starts Brett has missed, the Royals have a losing record. But even so, this team can really hit. The Kansas City Ball Club has been a high average hitter, potential to score a lot of runs, also speed to win some close ball games with the stolen base or aggressive base running. Also, credit Willie Wilson for Kansas City's aggressive style of hitting and running. Wilson is another MVP possibility. 
leading the majors in hits and runs scored, Willie the Wheeler also ranks second in the league in stolen bases and triples. Other key players include UL Washington, who stabilized the shortstop position, hitting a steady 270 and ranking third in the league in triples. The Royals team ranks first in three baggers. Kansas City is not power hungry, but Willie Mays Akins, along with Brett, provides long ball strength, 20 homers and 92 RBIs to complement his near 290 average. Kansas City has not had the big year from Darrell Porter, but John Wathan has handled the job remarkably well behind the plate and kept up the attack with an average over 300. The 1980 Royals boast more offense, a new manager in Jim Fry, and better pitching. With 19 victories, Dennis Leonard closes in on his third 20 victory season in four years. After the All-Star break, Leonard won 12 of his first 14. And with 18 victories, Larry Gura also hopes to win 20. As a proven Yankee killer, Gura spurs KC's hope of breaking Yankee dominance should New York win its division. But the biggest difference is Dan Quisenberry, who gives Kansas City the bullpen stopper it needed. In 39 games in which he entered with a lead, the Royals won 37 times, and Quisenberry has figured in 48% of the team's victories. Yes, Kansas City now feels ready for the New York Yankees. I think we're going to play each other again in 1980. Uh, if we can go out and play the way we've played so far this season and forget the New York Yankees, uh, just go out there and play baseball, I think we can beat them three out of five. Now, some banner bullpen seasons with leaders in the Relief Man of the Year competition. Different signs of how to spell relief in different towns. In Chicago, it's been Souter for years. Last season, Bruce Souter not only won Fireman of the Year, but also the Cy Young Award. This year, counting two points for each win or save and subtracting one for a loss, Souter's 28 saves, five wins, and eight losses give him 58 points, tops in the National League and just ahead of Raleigh Fingers of the San Diego Padres. With 10 wins and 22 saves, Fingers hopes to become the first man to win the award three times. Raleigh's been doing it for years with the same cool attitude. I try not to think about it too much. Uh, you know, when I come in, you know, about the situation when I come in, uh, I've been doing it so so many times, you know, so often that uh, I get into that situation. I just try and get the hitter out uh, to the plate. I don't worry about the, too many things, uh, you know, the fans or the TV cameras or whatever. You start worrying about that, you might as well put yourself in a white jacket. So I don't worry too much about the pressure. I just try and get the guy out the plate. The Cincinnati Reds have a reliever who looks a bit heady, but really confounds batters. Tom Hume came on strong last season and now ranks a close third in National League competition with 52 points, including 23 saves, second only to Suter. And in New York, the Mets claim the league's fourth ranking reliever in young curveballing Neil Allen. Although only 22, Allen's racked up 50 points with seven wins and 22 saves. This year, I'm, I'm more relaxed. I'm kidding around with all the guys. I'm, you know, the guys accept me as, uh, you know, kind of the clown type guy in the locker room. And uh, we all get along very well. And, and right now, I'm, I get along super with my teammates, and I think that's the biggest thing. And the guys like me the way I am right now is the way I'm going to stay. Turning to the American League Relief Man competition, the New York Yankees have stayed on top thanks to baseball's top bullpen, led by the Golden Goose. Red Hot Rich Gossage. In 33 save chances, Mother Goose has saved 31, and that's no fairy tale. Gossage ranks second in the league with 73 points, while the Yankee bullpen leads the majors with 128. The Chicago White Sox learned what they sowed could be reaped when Ed Mule Farmer came in. 59 points and 26 saves. Third place for the Mule who's been pretty stubborn after kicking around for years. 
in Detroit, sombreros off to the Tigers' senior smoke, Aurelio Lopez, who's lit 12 victory cigars, saved 19, and ranks fourth with 57 points. Finally, a Major League record holder spells it out in Kansas City. Dan Quisenberry, who delivers from down under, has totaled 81 points with 33 saves and 11 victories, ahead of Bruce Souter's record pace. Yes, so far, the quiz is the whiz in the Relief Man of the Year competition. And that means number one. Now, the answer to this week's Volkswagen quiz. Gorgeous George Sisler of the old St. Louis Browns holds the major league record for most hits in a season with 257 in 1920. The Hall of Fame first baseman hit 407 that year, and two years later went on to bat 420 with 246 hits. Dr. Heckle and Mr. Hyde. How to heckle and hide, even if the game's in the bag. Sometimes fans bring along their own hecklers to the ballpark. Hey, you a heckler, son? Oh, well, what the heck. Some heckle, some hide. Even on the field where there's no place to hide. just failed your screen test, but there'll be other chances. Now, some New York screenings. The Yankees' sweet Lou Pinella hits it, but Oakland's swinging A's miss it. Sweet Lou gets two, but it scored E9. And Sweet Lou turned sour. Meanwhile, cross town, the Mets try an intentional pass and issue a pass to third. Now the Mets can't be so choosy about the official scorer because they have to take what they can get, if they can get it. Not that way. And not that way. One more time, guys. Not again. Tough try, but tough luck. Well, here's one last gasp. Oh, no. But how about that? Believe it or not, that had to be that old Met magic. Now, magic of a different order. Flagging down great plays on the diamond. First trick for the California Angels left fielder Bobby Clark. Next, a magic moment in right from the Expos' Roland office. Sleight of hand in center from the Braves' Dale Murphy. Third base, the artful Dodger, Ron Say. Also at third, Boston's Glenn Hoffman with a vanishing run. For the San Diego Padres, behold the Wizard of Oz, Ozzy Smith. Angel Grace, Carney Lansford at third. Indian Magic, Jerry Dibzinski, two out of one. And finally for the Yankees, the ghost of Greg Nettles, Aurelio Rodriguez at the hot corner. Now you see him, now you don't. Zooming along now to some big league newsmakers out of left field. 
Texas Ranger left fielder Al Oliver is quietly having a great year. Batting 314 with 17 homers, 109 RBIs. And the Texas O recently collected career hit number 2000. Cleveland Indian left fielder Miguel Delaney now sets a new team record with every stolen base. 57 so far. Ditto for 21 year old Oakland left fielder Ricky Henderson. Four steals in one recent game. Overall, 89 to top the American League. Finally, another left field base burner and recipient of this week's Gillette Special, Willie Wilson of the Kansas City Royals. By extending his streak of consecutive stolen bases to 32, Willie broke the American League record of 27 straight set by Ron LaFleur with the Tigers and was only six away from the Major League mark. For the year, Wilson was 74 for 82 and thrown out only once in his last 42 attempts. A tough out at the plate and on the bases. Congratulations, Willie. And that's all for now, folks. See you next week on This Week in Baseball.